All right, and we're back. Back from the Unleashed podcast number eight. We are remote. Eric is remote. How's it going? Gavalancing around the world. That's Maybe. Nice. Yes, sir. But nothing's more important than this podcast, Joel. So let's let's get to it. Yes. All right. So the last podcast, we I'll, I'll let you guys in on a little secret. We kind of messed up. Not really a mess up. A little bit of mess up. We just posted the podcast and us getting ready for the podcast with no intro, with no music, with no nothing. But I think people kind of like it because they saw us just messing with the mic and you being like, no, point the mic this way. And I and I was like all like in thought. But yeah, I saw think us in the like wild. It. Yeah, saw us in the wild. So maybe we'll do that with this one where we were talking before this podcast about camera angles and whatnot. Who knows? Hopefully not. All right, we'll, we'll do an intro to it. So we were just going over everything we had. We liked, we had a lot of feedback from the last podcast. I don't know how many comments it had, but the main takeaway from people from the last podcast, and we want to make the comments from the last podcast, a big part of our podcast and make our people a part and the commenters a part of the podcasts, the podcast community was probably ear cropping and tail docking. Do you agree? That was the main comment part. Yeah. I mean, there was some bleed over from the Malinois owners. And so I think it's important to touch on a little bit of everything, but we also don't want to get sucked into last podcast because there's so much good stuff that we have for this one that we want to address the comments, but also pull some new spins off on what the commenters were saying and then kind of roll into because there was some really thought provoking. Uh, yeah, I learned. For instance, like the ears and so forth was super interesting to me. I agree. So here's what I learned. I was reminded about the ear floppy because you and I got into why f- ears flop and there's no wild canine where there's floppy ears and your mm-hmm. mind was blown. You said that there's no wild. You can look it up. Look up coyotes, look up wolves, look up. Uh, New Guinea singing dogs, look up uh, uh, um, um, African, those little coyote like dogs there in Africa. No floppy like jackals ears. or no jackals. Yeah, no okay. floppy ears. And there's more canines than that. There's ard wolves and there's all these wolf types. Anyway, no floppy ears. Why do our dogs have floppy ears? Why are floppy ears better? Why are floppy ears worse? I heard from groomers, they said that floppy ears get a lot of. Uh, Ear infections Hmm. because it keeps the moisture in. Never thought of that. That's why stand up ears might be better. Okay. Here's one of my big takeaways. I was reminded of a study done in Russia in the seventies, took a bunch of foxes. I've seen the video of it. I learned about it in school and I forgot about it. The ears start to flop when dogs were domesticated, when these foxes were domesticated over generations, their ears just started to flop. It's a product of tameness. This was a tameness study done by a guy named, I want to get his name right, Rev Believ. Belly, that's a tough one. So anyway, that's why he, Domesticated dog's ears flop, I believe, is due to tameness. It was not selected for in the process. It was just as they got tamer, their ears flopped. But I think there was like a contention. We th- we were talking about the podcast uh, a couple of days ago. And I think there was this idea that you had about when they're in the wild and they have predators that could p- potentially be trying to kill them, right? That the need to have the ears constantly like almost like a deer or something is constantly like using its ears to see if there's a threat that maybe that creates some type of stimulation in the ear. I mean, it's just an opinion, right? But it's, and then from there, you're like, um, if you never have threats and you live on a farm or you live just, you know, wherever indoors, there's absolutely no reason to have that level of quality hearing. Right. Well, that's, it's one and the same, the tameness, And the not having threats are the same thing. The breeding for tameness will then flop the ears because there there are no threats. The the the, the domestication process is is showing tameness. Hence, 
there, there, there's, there is no threat. Domestication means there's less threat. Tameness means there's less threat. So there's a whole bunch of characteristics that probably once these threats go down and the lifestyle the becomes goes down. like an American lifestyle, more or I mean, less. Years once go it, down. Yeah, then all these natural yeah. occurring uh, survival mechanisms all just go, oh, we, we can turn those off, right? Because yeah. we don't need them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not it's not selected for the the you know Darwin and whatnot. It's all about selection and the body using energy to do certain things. It then turns off the energy to those. If the ears aren't working and moving, the body says, "Why would I put energy into standing them up when they're not needed?" Mm -hmm. Right in domestication, they're not moving, standing up. So the body's just going flop them, yeah. tails change, noses change. I talked about it in our first podcast, neoteny. Neoteny, yeah. That and was the, number the one, nose, right? The nose will start to come in. Now, I don't know why exactly that happens, but that happens with all animals. The nose becomes more puppy-like or more cats and killer whales even, lions. Their nose comes in. Anyway. Yeah, yeah you made a really Darwin interesting stuff. point about the energy. Right. You said, why waste energy? And obviously in the wild, there's no reason to waste any energy when you're trying to survive. Right. It reminds me of if you were to go, let's say, looking for animals, maybe you're like hunting and you look and you're just looking through the wild and you're just staring right for any movement. But I'm not talking about for a minute or two. I'm talking about for six hours, seven oh, yeah. hours. The dra It is completely draining because it's so much effort to stare and to try to look for any, it's like a heightened level of concentration that is yeah. exhausting. It's just like doing a math problem or something. Yeah. It's, you, people normally just sit around and gaze, right? But to, so the energy these animals are using is probably, right? And then they're just right. like, oh, we don't need to do it. Turn the ears the off. The difference between life and death to have energy or, or, or uh, um, um, yeah, energy go to a part of the body. Yeah, that's not needed. And have you heard that study or whatever? That, I'm sure you've heard this, that the brain weighs generally about 3% of, you know, the muscle of the brain weighs about 3% of the human body, but requires 25% of its energy. Mm. Have you heard that before? No. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how true that is. You know, that's what they say, but uh, it is interesting, but there's no doubt that the brain needs more energy than it hey, is. For by the way, this, uh, I hear a lot of things on news and by experts and by scientists. Brain size is not a great dictator of uh, intelligence, but it's referred to a lot by scientists. The dolphin brain is very big, but much of the brain is devoted to one thing, echolocation. So it's not a good representation of intelligence. The capuchin monkey, yeah, echo, a look, echolocation is this one thing they do, but it, ha, it the brain is bigger due to it. That's not a, echolocation is not an intelligence thing. It's a, is it like a GPS? Is it like uh, using the um, bouncing the, of the, the sonar? The sound goes out, the sound comes in. The brain needs a something to to handle that incoming sound and to process it. That doesn't mean they're smarter. It means they can echolocate. Bats can echolocate. So but my I point think is there's an intelligence to that, right? There, there's a. It's like you yeah, don't but need, not in a traditional way you'd think of intelligence. Yeah, you're right. I'm just thinking devoted like, to one thing. It's not important unless you're lost at sea and need to find out where you're going, right? Like then well, it's it the is important, important thing. but that doesn't mean it's it's intelligence. Yeah, it's not like what is intelligence? Problem solving. <laughs> probably and social. So, uh, social Most. animals tend to be more intelligent than unsocial animals. So whether social animals become more intelligent because they're social or they're intelligent, therefore they get social. I don't know, but that is a fact. Intelligent animal, social animals are intelligent and intelligent animals are social. It's a or cause versus at least effect. the first. Yeah. Cause versus effect. All right. Hmm. We're going to get into, I actually like this. Con I could, I could talk about this for a while because I learned about all this, but well, I just hear bad information out there by scientists. And I'm not saying I know everything, but. Well, you, so I'm wondering about like 
other types of animals and intelligence. I know this isn't what this podcast is about, but as far as I've seen, I know we should change it. (laughs) Like, uh, so I know there's obviously varying levels of intelligence with primates, but supposedly bonobo chimps are the most similar to humans. But then I don't know if you've seen where they look at eagles and other types of things and they want to see if they can recognize themselves in the mirror. Have you seen this? Like certain animals eagles put them in smart. the mirror. They don't Not understand. But there are, I think, uh, some base, I mean, I think many, uh, what are they, primates? Many primates can easily tell that that's themselves in the mirror. Yeah, I believe that. Self-recognition, right? Yeah, yeah. No, that's a good point. That is some sign of intelligence. For and then sure. the use of tools too. The use of tools. Crows and ravens do it. Chimps do it. My guess is elephants probably do it. How do the how would they how would crows use a tool? They have done a number of things. They've done tests where they put something. They they wound like something they wanted on a string, and the crow like wrapped the string around the branch and pulled the thing up. Is that tool hmm. use? That, yeah. Well, any, it's almost like little puzzles that are able puzzles. to yeah. solve the puzzles in order to get what they want. And I know monkeys can do all kinds of like wild, like interesting stuff in order to get. Yeah. 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 I mean, the right. chimps putting the stick down in the anthill and then eating it, you know, um, crows and ravens dropping, although vultures do this too. So do I, um, other birds, they throw things on concrete to break them. I mean, you could say the concrete is a tool or a rock would be a tool. You know, yeah. there's a lot. It's pretty there's amazing. Killer whales flipping a fish out of their mouth. So a seagull comes down and they eat the fish. Oh yeah. That was what? Number two podcast. Number two. You talked about that. Oh yeah. Like yeah. Really intelligent uh, things that the, the marine mammals or probably only killer whales can do that. Right. Dolphins. Dolphins and killer whales. Yeah. Yeah, I thought though, I know it, people might not enjoy it, but I think that the that Fox study that I think there was at least two comments that mentioned at least that Fox study. study and that seemed pretty. But then also they were talking about the the changing of the color of the coat, right? Yeah. Like lightning. There's a lot of byproducts of tameness of breeding for for tame characteristics and then physically what happens. Yeah. It's really interesting. It's hard to understand why like it would go in certain directions. Like, okay, we're going to make the coat lighter. They Maybe... become puppy like is, is the short answer. They, they go to, I t- talked about in the first neoteny. They, that they, they physically and emotionally become a young animal. Mm-hmm. So maybe young animals tend to be born with light. I know kids tend to be born with blonde hair, then it turns brown. It's it's rarely the opposite. What about, so isn't you know it true that green and orange are opposite sides of the color wheel? I've heard I this. That I think the idea is um, orange and green, and this would be bad if I'm wrong, but this is what I hear. Uh, green and orange are, are essentially seen like the same thing in the wild if you were to be colorblind it would and many animals are colorblind by the way i had okay can i can i stop you will you remember that thought because now you're getting me on interesting stuff go ahead i had an we had an elephant expert come to our school all the students are there she had her elephant like right there and someone goes oh no we went to their place we Mm. went to um have trunk will travel is the name of the place and they do a bunch of elephant stuff It's in California. One of our students asked, do elephants see color? And the lady said, and I'm not bashing the lady, but she goes, yeah, they seem, they're so smart, I assume they seem color. Seeing color and intelligence have nothing to do with each other. Seeing when fruit is ripe or when the baboon female's behind gets super red to the male that's you, why you'd see color. Nature would not select for seeing color if seeing color did not help you. Fruit being ripe, a female being in heat. Mm-hmm. Do dogs see color? I doubt it. Why would they see color? Now, rods and cones in, in eyes are hard for a veterinary or a scientist to go through and go, oh, they see color because of rods and cones. I go to would the hate would would 
their natural behavior dictate whether they see color? And if not, why would nature select for it? So parrots probably see color. Baboons definitely see color. Monkey, almost all monkeys probably see color. Mm -hmm. Would a killer whale see color? Why would a killer whale see color? They are black and white and they eat silver things and gray things. Why would they see color? I don't know. I think yeah. it's interesting. And if you see just a normal looking camera underwater, it's not. It ain't colorful. Now, certain colorful, fish, yeah. certain fish in, in uh, the coral reef is a different story. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot more light, right, hitting the water because of the shallowness. Or, I mean, same amount of light, but um, yeah, yeah, more reason for color in the shallower areas, I would imagine. So anyway, I mean, no, that's, go ahead. You that's the good. spectrum thing. So yeah, so if you think about this, and this will be fun, I'm sure the people will fact check this, but imagine if green is the corresponding color to orange on the color wheel. If that is true to some extent in that if something is orange, I feel like I've looked, at, I've actually tested this before, but if, if, if something is orange in a green field and you're not able to differentiate it being green versus orange, if you're looking at it through a black and white lens, then my hypothesis on the fox is that if a fox is incredibly orange, it would blend in with the landscape really well from just a pure visual standpoint. And yeah. then if it became less tame, it starts getting lighter, blonder, because it doesn't need to blend in with the environment. Yeah, that makes Possibly. sense. Possibly. This could be total nonsense. But that's I the beauty of it. Yeah. Yeah. People will let us know. We yeah. got some smart people following this podcast. I know. I know. I'm looking at the comments right it's now. Hum it's humbling. Yeah. Um, okay. So we got to the, the Fox studies about ear ears flopping and why they flop. Mm -hmm. We heard from groomers that said that floppy ears are not great. We heard from a lot of people who said, why cut your dog's ears and tail off? We, we got both sides of the spectrum. Um, I had it. There was an interesting comment that said, if Dobermans don't crop their ears, they will go away as a breed. Did you see that one? Mm. Yeah, they will. He's right. She's right. They're going away. You don't. Now, the people who don't want ear cropping and tail docking, they don't care if Dobermans go away as a breed. You think AKC people, you think lovers of Dobermans, you think lovers of dog breeds care if a whole breed just disappears. Mm -hmm. I would think they would care. I care a little bit. I like Dobermans. I don't want them to go away as a breed. Yeah, the, there were some interesting things regarding the tail docking. So, I mean, we could break every part of what people were saying, but uh, breaking of tails was one thing yeah. that, uh, and then especially as things relate Dobermans. to hunting. Um, but the hunting thing is fascinating to me because if you think about, um, this is actually a function of dogs working versus like Prince works, herding dogs work, hunting dogs actually work. So it's a totally, what you need for a dog who's running through the wild is different. And it was making me think about some of these, um, kind of like your idea about like a given tool is good for a given purpose. Whereas I think it's important and in, in people in the comments that would say something about, um, let's say, you know, docking is always bad or ear cropping is always bad. Um, when you don't live in a certain environment, like in a wild environment, uh, so to speak, like on a ranch, you don't understand anything about that. Like I saw it last night. I was, out at, world. A, I was at a, a ranch and I saw um, there was these four Labradors and there was a big, huge electric fence separating them, I suppose, from the horses that were on the property. And so you think, oh, well, electric fences are bad. Well, there's a reason they have those for horses, right? There's something going on. Plus they have other types of wild animals that come into the property, including uh, wild pigs or hogs. And um, yeah. you know what I mean? So you have to just think about things in terms of maybe there's a reason people dock tails. Maybe there's a p reason people uh, crop ears. And if you've never lived that experience to know or worked on a ranch, you don't know. Oh, that's why they do that. And then, then your mind's blown because you, you know, yeah, when you live in an apartment, you might not need to do the same thing that someone does who owns a 150 acre well, piece of property. Yeah, hardcore, but you're 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 not convincing anybody because hardcore 
ear never uh, uh, do anything that might cause an animal stress, people don't care about what you just said. They are ideologues mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter to them. You, d you know what I'm saying? They don't care, dude. They don't care in any way what you just said. They don't care about the experience of, of a farmer or rancher. Mm -hmm. They say, why would you do something mean, mean to the little to the little doggy who I care about as much as, as human beings. They don't care. Yeah, they probably don't care about the farmer or the rancher either. No, that's, no. You convinced nobody yeah. with your, with your real um, pragmatic statement. Uh, so at this property, there were four labs of varying age, uh, including a puppy. I took a picture of it. Uh, and there was a really old one actually too, that was eight. I think it was eight years old. It was a brown lab. And it was like hobbling because it was so old, you know, yeah. and it was, it was like the, you could tell it was a mom. And, uh, these dogs were full of joy and living on this large piece of property. And I think they were just so well adjusted because they get plenty of stimulation, tons of exercise. And yeah, for sure. Like they just seem super, uh, adjusted. Plus I think they also do some type of maybe hunting or, you know, some other type of bird. I imagine that some type of bird hunting or something that they might do as well, yeah. But, yeah, but it was great. Sure. It was amazing. Yeah. The other thing that I got, uh, that, that was interesting to me that people commented was I talked about some like water birth or we talked about water birth and my, my, after reading some of the comments, my thinking shifted. I thought water births or home births or something was about the child. It's actually more about the mother's comfort. Did you see those comments? Multiple people said, oh, it's kind of more the mom giving birth. And now I think it's probably 80, 20 or 50, 50. I thought it was like 90, 10. It was about 90% about the kid coming into the world without trauma. Mm -hmm. The commenter said it's, it's actually about the mother's comfort, which actually then does affect the child's comfort right because yeah. they're connected um but i thought that was interesting it's more about the mom are you do you think we should apologize for this should this oh, oh yeah you wanted to make section? this apology assignment but it's not yeah 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 i apologize no but there's no one to apologize to is our joke I know, but we, apology segment it's not an apology but we tease out these ideas but i think we're pretty clear on the last podcast i don't even remember what we said exactly but we're pretty clear that we're not experts on um you know, childbirth, childbirth, childbirth. Exactly. We've been in the room for three of them each, but that's, yeah. that's about it. What about, you know, who also does water births? Um, whales. Yeah. I've seen them. Yeah. Have you? Yeah. A few of them. Uh, two. I, I think I, I saw, think. I feel like I saw that on, it's pretty wild. that was a commercial for SeaWorld. Don't you think where there was like, it right. showed the killer whale being born. Is that true? Yeah, probably 20 years ago. Bro, yeah. it's crazy. It's such a big deal. And we have monitors and trainers and everyone watching 24 hours a day leading up to the birth. Then we have these things called, we have we have target poles and then we wrap them so that the baby, because there's sprayers at the outside of the pool and you don't want the baby to come up and like hit these things on the edge of the pools like water sprayers or or there's just a sprinkler or what yeah it's like a sprinkler or whatever but it's it so we have baby bumpers so the baby bur is birthed it comes out right and it like goes choo, 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 and it goes to the top to get a breath mm -hmm. and we have trainers at the end that will just kind of push the baby away so it doesn't like hit this it's never happened i mean yeah most likely it'll never happen but it's like a big deal and everyone cheers it's pretty cool yeah that so yeah i've seen couple that is pretty neat i've seen it on discovery channel or whatever blood goes into the whole pool yeah that's yeah people don't like to, people don't like to they don't love the uh the truth about life all the time right they go they want it they think it should be more clean should be right they're like oh that there shouldn't be blood in the pool <laughs> that's not right <laughs> they're the same people that are against some of this stuff i think they're like there should not be blood in that pool that's not right yeah, I saw a video of a hyena like yesterday, like just disemboweling a live. I told I talked about this a few weeks ago too, but I saw a different one of it. And the thing was alive for a long time. And the hyena is just like, I'm going to eat you alive. These people are like, that animal in captivity, it's the worst thing ever. 
like as he is, he becomes disemboweled and feels horrible pain by this single hyena that doesn't hyenas don't know how to kill things effectively. They will just eat you alive if they can. The lion's like, I'm going to kill you first. Hyenas are like, I'm going to eat you for an hour while you're still alive. And that horribleness. People are they like, just oh. want to get a hold of you, right? Like the hyena, if it can just get a hold of you, it'll crunch you and then it'll just move its way up probably, right? Yeah. And and yeah, it doesn't care that you're alive and feeling horrible pain. Or, now, that's not an argument for captivity. Well, it's a small argument for captivity. It's something to take into account. The wild, how painful and brutal it is. So... Every cat that you know of likes to do the, is it a, is it a back of the neck or is it a jugular side of the neck jugular situation? Every cat cats are here. Yeah. They kill things effectively. That's the animal I'd want to be killed by a lion but they, or a tiger. But, they, but so, but often they have to jump on the back. So are they jumping in the back and going sideways and trying to get the chunk of the neck? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Or You'll do they just want to get any bite of it that they can? Well, you're thinking of leopards and mountain lions. They'll like they'll like go on the back a lot, and they'll, they'll always try to get here, mm -hmm. bro. It's an interesting thing. I watch all animal videos a lot. Mm -hmm. I've been seeing all these leopards that come into like and kill dogs in like India and Africa, mm -hmm. and they'll have security footage of it. It's so weird. The leopard wakes the dog up first. Don't believe me? Go to any leopard video. Dogs sleeping in India usually. Dog's sleeping. The leopard comes up and stands about this close to the dog. So and then he wakes the dog up or he waits till the dog wakes up and he goes for it. He does not do it while the dog is asleep. Do you think it's to differentiate from making sure it's not dead or something? No. He knows the dog's alive. The leopard sits there. I've seen one where the leopard sit there for 30 seconds right here on the dog, staring at the dog. And the dog's just sleeping, just happy as could be. He waits, the dog literally goes, opens his eyes and moves for a second and the leopard grabs him. I think because if he just grabs it, I think, and I'm thinking about this right now, is if he, because I've thought about it, but I've never had the answer. I think he waits, if, if he grabs the dog, the dog's going to have this reaction that's going to be actually kind of big. It's a waking up reaction. The leopard gets the waking up reaction out. It also might move the dog just enough so his neck's exposed, but it's very interesting. I've seen many videos on this it's horrible by the way a, i don't like it don't they have a reaction when someone grabs their neck and tries to kill them too though yeah i know i don't totally get it i'm trying to figure it out because every leopard video i've seen it they wait for the dog to wake up every single one every uh, single one they did don't you kill it while it's asleep it's did you get a chance to see the facebook thing I sent, I sent you via text yesterday. It, you didn't watch, did you? It was a, Thank it's you. pretty short. It saying. was a lion going after a hyena cub, pup, whatever they call it. I've seen them. it. I've seen it. I saw your thumbnail and I was like, I've seen that one. Okay. Yeah. They love so, killing hyenas. They and love it, it also looked like more than he killed it. But, and I was thinking, oh, he is going to eat it. I don't think he ate that. They sometimes eat them and they sometimes I think he don't. didn't. They I think just he like just had them and then he just kind of tossed them. Yeah. On the Can road you imagine road. hyenas probably don't taste good. They're their own. Hyenas are their own thing. They're, they're closest to the weasel family. They're their own. They like they're not weasels. dogs. So they probably are like, I know, a lot, I know a lot about their personality just from the Lion King. Oh, you, know, you get then you're, girl, an, you're an expert. Yeah. 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 There's like a uh, very mean in the Lion King. <laughs> yeah. They weren't nice to, uh, what is it? Mufasa? Mustafa. <laughs> Something like that. Mufasa. They weren't nice to anybody till the end. Then they turned. Hyenas then, are cool, man. I like hyenas. Yeah. They're brutal. I, They're brutal. Animals, I think so. I think we might have mentioned it on there. I might have mentioned it on the podcast about that. They can, a hyena can bite through an elephant's femur. That's not true. No? Is that a lie? Yeah. We need to get the these things issues. take a mind that they, 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 we used to say at school, we'd be like, we'd bring out a parrot and every line we, we do these, these, um, little kids would come in and we'd walk around. Well, the same lies get told constantly. And we'd be like this parrot, like a scarlet parrot, these big parrots, right? Yeah. They have strong bites. You don't want to get bit by one. And we go, everyone would say it. All the students would say it. Me like, included yeah. probably early on. We go, this parrot can bite through a broomstick. One of my teachers one day goes, by the way, there's no way a parrot can bite through a broomstick. But we tell all the kids this because we thought it was true and it sounded cool, but it's just not true. 
but i wonder i wonder because you know they say uh all lies have 80 percent truth uh, also well, they can probably a lie too but i wonder if <laughs> what if it's not uh <laughs> that's a lie too right so what if it's actually not that the hyena will run up on an elephant and bite its femur and you know, it might not be able to even reach the femur um but it would take it down and bite through it and kill it or whatever versus it's a dead what if it's a dead elephant and they co they come across the bone yeah. and you know and then there they there's a femur there and it has the ability to bite through the femur but not Bro, while it's alive i never thought for a single second when you said that it was talking about a live elephant I assume what it you, was. No, no. I assumed your point of biting through the femur was just a femur on the ground and a hyena biting through it, which also isn't true, let alone well, a gonna, live elephant. I'm going to show you how the human brain works for a second, Joel. So you're seven and someone says, did you know a hyena can bite through an elephant's femur? And then yeah. you believe that for the next 30 yeah, plus, yeah, yeah. 40 plus years, right? Yeah. And then one day you're on a podcast with some kind of exotic animal trainer slash dog trainer slash you know marine mammal guy yeah goes, that's not true and yeah your whole your, your whole world is shattered <laughs> because if that lie if that's a lie what else is a lie joel anything bite power is most likely not true but yes many things in life are not true that goes back to our last podcast about me and you were like not believing anything anyone told us that's which also podcast. isn't a good way to live life by the way children i think but, it's but maybe a there's way. a maybe it is a um uh, maybe it's a certain type of superpower because you know dave ramsey he's a uh, yeah. personal finance guy he yeah. always would say that the reason he's so successful is he has common sense and he says nowadays common sense is like a superpower that's true i think it is a superpower nowadays not even common, like I would say, um, when you question things, common sense, no, he's right. Common sense. But even you want to go beyond that, you, you really like vet anything anyone tells you. Well, I think there's and a, go, hmm. I think there's a situation between taking in information that you hear from people, which a lot of times is just anecdotal information versus using your eyes and your ears yes. and your experience to say, I never yes. saw a deer do that. I never saw a dog do that. And you start to wonder, you know, versus I think the way that we talked about on the last podcast about schooling. And it's like, it's a brain dump of here's 75,000 facts in four years, and we're going to dump it into your brain. And now you're smart. Whereas you never really learned the, how to question things, how to tease out the truth on your own through, you know, yeah. You know what I mean? Common sense or through, um, trial and error or through anecdotal or through. Yeah. 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 I'm a big anecdotal guy, but I've also been on the earth 47 years, 47 so years. Oh, yeah. oh, sorry. No, that's right. It's like that Kevin, uh, heart clip. That's what you're going for there, right? No, I don't know about it. Oh, um, the actor, this other actor goes, and I'm 50 and Kevin Hart goes, well, and it became like a whole meme <laughs> or a whole thing. It's yeah, great. that's what you just did. Um, so when you're on the earth a while, you've actually seen a lot. Therefore, you have the sample size to be able to go. Well, that's not true. If you're 12 and someone, you know, yeah, you can't use anecdotal evidence. You literally can't. The sample size is not large enough. And I'm that's not... what getting older does for you. I'm not quite as old as you, but we are both old enough to know that a lot of the early information that we gathered as children, it was, well, my dad told me this, my mom told me this versus Google nowadays where you could just look things up. Now, sure, there was encyclopedias, but if you were argu argu arguing with your friend on the playground, you're not going to yeah. go look at the uh, encyclopedia. Whereas nowadays people have like a computer in their That's pocket, true. so to speak. But you so got to like, vet that information too, right? Wikipedia for sure. Yeah. I mean, even, even anything, right? If you look at it, you always have to look at the source, just like the studies we've talked about. Like, yeah. well, what is there a, and that's, that's the most important common sense piece. Look at things with a critical eye, but you look at it from the perspective of, um, okay, who is this person telling me this information? Do they get anything out of this? 
are they winning if I believe something? And then if you see that the there are motive potentially bad motives or bad incentives, then you might have to question, you know, you just take what they say with a grain of salt because if they're gonna make a million dollars off of what they're saying, then maybe yeah, you know, take it with a grain of salt. Yeah. All right, think? kids, that's your yeah, that's your lessons for today that are yeah. non animal related. And non asked for too. And no one asked for it. Yeah. But this is our podcast. Yeah. We can do whatever we want. Maybe they are getting smarter. Like this should be remember last week the lady was using your uh operant conditioning video to teach her college class. Yeah. Oh, someone commented on that. They're like, really? I don't wanna diss this person because I like that he commented. But he's like, college students don't know operant conditioning. It's only wait for a behavior to happen and reinforce it. Well, that's actually not operant conditioning. That's positive reinforcement, which is only one arm of operant conditioning. So burn for that, for that gentleman. It is more complicated than that. That is one, literally one of the four things of operant conditioning. That's the positive reinforcement side of it. So anyway, but I like that that guy commented. I don't want to trash him or her. Yeah, I think it was a guy. Yeah, okay, that's... I gotta get out of this. So I'm gonna look at the comments from that last. Yeah, I got Actually, I got some comments uh, pulled up, and then I'm I sure got got some. I've got a segment that um, I'm gonna. Can I preview it a little bit, or we can get into it? Probably get into it. So yeah. there is a thing that happens in the dog training dog training world that I don't understand that people do. Now, I think I understand why people. You could say someone could say. It's so dumb. No one trains. People don't train their dogs. And I don't understand it. I actually understand it. I've seen very capable, very intelligent people not be able to train their dogs because dog training is hard. I like, I get it. There's things I, I think I understand why people do and don't do things with their dogs. But there's one thing I do not understand. And maybe you or someone else could help me with this. I'll, maybe I under, I don't know. I'm going to talk through it. Whoops. Okay. When I go to people's homes sometimes, and I don't judge dog trainers or dog people very much. I go to people's homes sometimes. Their dog is out of control. I don't understand why they don't put their dogs away. And they let their dogs be out of control when people, especially people with children, come over. Now, you can argue, not even argue, you, these people should train their dogs at that moment. But if you're going to choose not to train your dog to not jump, to not be crazy, to not lick, to not do any of these annoying behaviors that are out of control. I'm not talking about one jump and one lick and normal dog stuff. I'm talking about out of control dogs when people come over. I don't get why they don't put the dog away. They're not going to train the dog. Put the dog away. It's never a move. It's never a thing anyone does. Hmm. It's either, and I don't get it. I had to have a talk. The most capable family I know that we're friends with. These people are so smart and so, and their dog's out of control. And I, I went up to my great friend. I go, hey, you should put your dog away. I wasn't there to train dogs. And she goes, you're right. And she did because she's a very capable, but it's not in their head. It's in no one's head. If you're not going to train them, put them away. It's in nobody's head to put it, put the dog somewhere else. Hmm. That's no one. Zero percent of the population thinks to put their dog away. Do you remember? Do you remember NBC had the more you know thing? It had a little star of going across the screen. That's my so generation. And I feel I feel like know. this would be a public service announcement. We could we could even like make it as a teaser to the podcast, and it would be like like something. If I try to sum up what you're saying, it's like if your dog is out of control and you have guests over. And you're not willing to train it. The best thing you should do is train it. Okay. But you're not going to do that. If you trained that. it, then it wouldn't be out of control. So train be, it at that moment hurt. when someone walks in. Okay. You're sure. not doing that. You're yeah. literally just holding the dog back and then releasing the hounds as the people come in. I've seen it a hundred times. Say. Yeah. But yeah, if you are, away. then you'd put the dog away and then you go back to your guests. Essentially. That's, what you, that's what you should do. If you're not going to train it, put the dog away. I had I don't I had the it. opportunity at this house I was at last night. It was a big, huge ranch. And but I'm waiting for a person I've never actually met before. Uh, but my dad's met him. And there's 
four labs on there. But then there was another guy who showed up and he was a tenant there on this big property and he had a hunting dog and it looked almost like uh, had a terrier in it. And it comes running up at me and I'm like, this dog is going to like run into me. Yeah. And my first thought was I should do the old Joel Beckman knee. But where like it runs like right. You. So you're like, don't, don't act like Joel Beckman right now. But also like when you've never met somebody or know who they are and we're like, they're kind of like, they're kind of helping us out. Yeah, to you don't want with. to do that. I don't I, want to I like think. literally no. WWF knock his dog out. Um, never. so I was like, I'll just take the hit. Right. Not sure, a big sure. deal. Um, but it was, it actually is really funny that, um, how simple of a tool to just say, okay, dog's going away now. You know, this dog's out of control you're going to go in the garage or the backyard or wherever you put, you know, to allow. Um, but the That's idea coming. of training your dog, your children you said, are there. Correct. Yeah. You said uh, who with me? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah but not, so. they weren't there. They weren't there then. Okay. Go ahead. No, no. But, uh, what a concept to just put the dog away. Um, you know, and, and no one does come back later, but the training idea is even better. What about training well, yes. the dog to be a good dog? You should start a YouTube channel with that. Ah, like a dog training. training. Dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe I should maybe make a video or maybe I'll tell it now because people are like, well, we don't want to put the dog away, Joel, obviously, because no one does it, but we don't know what to do. Well, you kind of do know what to do. You think my doorway method is only for doorways? Do you think the stop and the little correction on a leash you could do 20 feet from the people walking in? Do you think the butt touch method of calming the dog down? I have multiple jumping methods. The leash step on method is for... I posted it two months ago. It's got 200,000 views. That is a guest coming over method. My uh, mind is blown right now. When you said the doorway method could be used for other things besides the doorway, 50% of people didn't understand that that was possible. Yeah. Your people come through the door, you're in the kitchen and your dog goes people and flies there and you give just a little down the side correction. Dog goes bink. Dog goes people runs again. You just go bink. Hey guys, how are you? And then you calm the tamp the dog down 60%. I'm okay with then 40% less, 60% less nuttiness. And you can let the dog off at that point. Yeah. Just bring it down. It doesn't have to be perfectly trained. It mm -hmm. has to be better. I see people hold their dog. Oh yeah. And they're apologizing to me as they come in. I'm not a dog trainer. I, I'm not even talking about me being a dog trainer, just a person. And they're holding dog and the dog's literally choking itself out. Then they let the dog go and the dog just flies up to people. And as they apologize. That's not good. That, and yeah. then the people coming over, most of the people, not me, are go. no, it's okay as their dog launches and they're actually not okay with it, but they're saying it's okay because that's the social construct, if that's the word of what we have right now. So do you have any other feedback on the old put the dog away? Because I have a quick thing I wanted to get into. And I'm done. it could potentially, okay, because it could potentially be, you know how like, there's always like a meat and potatoes kind of segment in every one of these podcasts. Maybe there's three where you're like, oh, wow, that's like a whole training video you do basically. like, Or it's a maybe it's like more of a philosophy or whatever. But I have this. It came from a comment and I won't get too into it. But at every about let's say about 45 minutes into every podcast, I bring up something about a cat and you go, is this Beckman cat training? Uh, and I go, yeah, yeah, yeah it yeah. actually is. Yeah, well, And you're going to do it again. Yeah, I'm going to do it again. But what's beauty, beautiful about it is I'm going to come comment. up with a potential idea for a thumbnail and a title for this podcast that I think you could go off on. And you might be like, this is the dumbest idea. I don't think we should do it. Or you might be like, we should go off on this for 20 minutes. And so here's what it is. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, save you the suspense. But a person said they have a bangle cat. So I don't know if they got that from the fact that I said I had a bangle. But they said it was a male bangle that was neutered. And it was giving unwanted sexual behavior toward the owners, essentially, right? Is more or less what it was. I won't read it, but that's what they said. And so my thought was, I have a female bangle. spade bangle, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it will start to sit on your lap and kind of do this weird, creepy clawing thing that feels yeah. weird. And un it's definitely unwanted. I don't know what type of behavior it is, but it seems a little off kilter. And so I was like, that's funny because I'd say we're in the same boat there, but it's also like, if you try to like interfere, it will like get aggressive and try to bite or yeah. 
you know, it's getting, it's basically turning into an aggressive cat. And so I'm the only one in the house that can regulate on the cat because the other, my other yeah. family members just get attacked and, and, but the cat knows not to mess with me. So, but anyways, so the point of this segue is, uh, I don't know if you have any other uh, comments on Bengals, but what I think you do have comments on is unwanted sexual behavior from your pet. Now, I don't know if you would c consider humping to be uh, unwanted sexual behavior. Would you? From a cat? From a cat? Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't want to be humped by a cat. No, but what about a dog? I mean. Oh, yeah, I don't want to be. Hum I've never been humped by a dog. But, but towards you see another happen, dog, in, right? I've seen dogs hump dogs. I rarely, I hear about dogs humping people. I've rare, I, I see it happen sometimes towards the owner, but it's, it's rare. Probably because they're at my place and they're distracted. I don't want to get off on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Unwanted. You don't want to be humped by anything. So well, any animal. you are just doing corrections to stop that essentially like on okay. leash or whatever. Yeah, I clap and I go grab the dog and the dog goes, oh, and they pair up the hump with the correction given by mean guy. And they go, well, I'm not going to do that hump because that causes that guy to do something. That's how you get rid of a behavior. That's one of the ways. Yeah, that's what I do for humping. But cat stuff. I mean, I don't know. You should you should look at why you're the only one that can do it and then try to train your family on being more like you. That's what I do with my clients. I go, hey, look at that dog didn't do that to me. Why? Okay, so maybe try to be more like me. But it's a cat and it, your family is small children and a, you know, yeah, a wife who maybe isn't as assertive as you. So. Yeah. Have you ever, this is going to turn into like a philosophy podcast, but you know who Jordan Peterson is? Yes. So he kind of has this idea about being a monster, essentially, like I've you're a it. monster, but you, you are yeah. because you're, you're a monster or you're who, capable who, of dangerous things, right? Who tamps it down. Yeah. You tamp down your to own live behavior in to live in. Yeah. To be civilized. Right. And so that yes. is kind of what it is. But I think, I don't know if this is the case with dogs, but maybe with other wild animals that smaller wild animals, right? If you let's say some type of weasel is trying to get, come after you and be aggressive. If, if you unleash the beast, so to speak, and just start looking like a crazed maniac with your head cut off, charging it, right. It's going to be like, Whoa, this guy's dangerous. And it's less like, it's less likely to want to fight you or do something right. Like a bear. They say yeah, any, to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Almost anything where in, maybe this is part of just the function of the wild that if, something thinks you are not worth the juice isn't worth the squeeze then it will back off right because it doesn't yes. and so there's something to the extent with like the cat in this case or a dog in other cases where if it sees that the dad is capable of some serious energy let's say right then it knows not to mess with the dad in certain cases Bro. right Bro, it's a very interesting thing you're bringing up. I've seen that clip of Jordan Peterson. I'm going to take it just for the sake of the podcast and me being the guy on the podcast. I'm going to take it a different direction, but the same. And I've I've seen that clip and I've thought that's interesting and that sounds true. But he's actually, now that I'm thinking of it and you're talking about it, he's actually more true than I think anyone understands. And I'm going to give you some examples. I will have people come out and I'm like, the dog counter surf, you have to go grab the dog and he's got to kind of feel your strength and you got to tell him no, not hardcore. It's pretty basic stuff, but that's got to be mm -hmm. done with a certain amount of energy that reaches here. Some of these people have literally never been there. They've you, never, never been there? they've never gone to that level of anger, if you want to call it that, or intensity that they need to get to, to get rid of that behavior. They've never been there. Therefore they can't go there. Mm. They can't. I'm literally looking at them. I'm going, you've got to, you've got to go. Hey, I had a trainer once. She big room cahoots in Escondido. We had this giant dog training room and I go, those people are 20 feet away from you. I won't use her name. And I go, so the, 
And I go, you got to teach this class. And I go, I want you to yell, hi, everybody. Welcome to class. No one was there. And she goes, hi, everybody. Welcome to class. And I go, no, no, no. You've got to bring it up here. She couldn't do it. She couldn't get her voice to that point because she'd never done it. Safeties, linebackers in the NFL. I've used this example with my clients. I go, I would rather have a linebacker who wants to take receivers heads off and then calm them down. This is the Jordan Peterson point. Mm. Then to take a linebacker that doesn't really want to hit people and try to bring them up. So to Jordan Peterson's point, it's better to be capable of it and not do it because you can't go the other way. You can't get an adult to get more intense. It's easier to get an adult to chill out. He is right. Yeah, that's that's pretty amazing. I was actually thinking with the safety thing or potentially like a linebacker be the in similar the NFL situation. Yeah. Um, is is I, I thought you were going to go in this direction, which is kind of funny. Uh, it's like a meta thing. So imagine going and like you are a safety or a linebacker. So all you know how to do is hit people really hard because you they catch the ball and you're mind tells you to smash them. So yeah. I was just thinking like, imagine if you're like at pr practice and the guy catches it like all outstretched and the linebacker just like takes his head off. And he's like, why did you do that to me? He's like, I'm sorry. I can't, I can't help it. When yeah. I see an outstretched receiver, I, you know, mutilate him, even if he's on my own team. Right. And that just seems like you can't, uh, and it reminded me that whole idea when I was talking about this, is where the meta thing comes in is like the herding idea that we're talking about last week of the dogs that are herding, uh, can, if you give them the outlet to herd, will they continue to yeah. herd anything? And I don't know if we ever solved, or I mean, I don't think we've solved that, but I, there's been some interesting conversation about it. There has. And actually after reading many of the comments, it see my questions seem to be answered. So I basically said, do we give a, a natural behavior like biting the back of, of a sheep, a dog, or a person's back legs is the answer to squash the instinct or the behavior or is the answer to give an outlet for it? Most of the comments from herding people, whether it's people who've done the classes with sheep or actual sheep herding trainers, have said you shouldn't take them and give them an outlet for it. So what is your actual stance or your belief currently? Not saying that you know it to be true. My belief sure. currently is my belief, my gut always, which is just, just because something, the dog thinks something needs to happen or the brain tells them something that needs to happen doesn't mean it needs to happen or needs to be satiated in the dog you should actually not let them do the behavior ever. Then the pathways in the brain will sort of be cut off as opposed to giving them tons of rehearsal of doing it. Now you could say herders need to herd. Now what my, my satiation thing, when it's like chewing as a puppy, their teeth are coming in. They have to do it. You need to yeah. give them something to do. But I think with an antisocial behavior, like biting other dogs and biting people as they leave your house, I don't think you take them the sheep class to train the off switch or to give them an outlet to do it. I think they come home and they still bite the person's legs as they leave the house. So I think you stop them from doing it have and you, don't let them do it with sheep. Have you heard, and this is, we, I, I definitely understand both sides of it. And I think they're well articulated points. Uh, have you heard the parable or whatever it is where the, um, I don't know if it's a, a frog is going across you know, a, a stream or, you know, or a river or something. And the, uh, what is it? A scorpion wants to get a ride on his back. Have you heard this or no? no? No. And basically he just says, Hey, give, you know, give me a ride across the uh, river. And then he says, I can't, he'll, he'll sting me. And then he goes, no, I won't, I won't sting you. And he's like, he's like, I need to get across. And he eventually gets him to, to take him across, you know? He's like, okay, uh, if you're not going to sting me, I'll take him across. And then he goes to the very end and then the scorpion stings him. Yeah. And he goes, why did you sting me? And he goes, well, because I'm a scorpion. Oh. And it's like, and it's just yeah. one of those things where it's like, why did you bite me? It's because I'm a healer, right? Or I'm, you know, I'm one of these things. But what made me change my mind, I think last night about this and have the opposite opinion 
that you do about this is seeing all those dogs on this large piece of property. I was thinking if they're like going after sheep as an example, just all the time and you know, then it really is satiated and they are probably, maybe they won't herd a, per, uh, a child because they might just go, I heard for six hours and I got my six hour of herding in and now I'm good to just, you know, not herd a kid, especially if I get yelled at one time for doing it. Yes. I would say the difference would be the situations I'm dealing with are the dogs doing the bad thing most of its life and the people are going to a one hour sheep herding class to try to satiate and train an off switch in the dog. And then the dog's going back to its house 99% of the time. The situation you're talking about, the dogs live on a ranch. Yeah. I, I don't know. It seems different. You're saying it's one versus 99 versus 99 versus 1%, right? So it's like yeah, you satiated many. 99. You don't need to do the one. You're saying they're just teasing the dog or just barely. They're just, they're almost creating the pathways in that sense or recreating the pathways to start to nip versus yeah. right. So that's, but how can you These, go off on this taking a bit? dogs to sheep herding class once a week, which is most of what any person can do mm -hmm. is not, um, is not satiating the dog nor be making the dog a working dog, which needs to happen to yeah. actually fix the problem. They are literally putting a tiny bandaid on the problem. So it's really maybe satiation works, but it needs to work more. It needs to be more than 99.9% .9 of the public is willing to do who doesn't live on a farm. Yeah. Working nor They're most jobs, you don't dog. work one hour a week, right? That's not really considered yeah. working. That's like yeah, a, that's right. a hobby. Uh, can you Good go point. off on something for me? Um, sure. I don't think I've ever heard you talk about this and I know you will say, okay, I have four German shepherds. They live in my apartment. Now, this is not true, but let's just go with it for a second. I know you would say, well, they've got four German shepherds. What can we do now? We yeah. need to do. Yeah. Now we need to that is true. figure out what we can do. But can you take us through this? Maybe not necessarily ideal situation, but you've got a small New York apartment with a dog. Then you have a 150 acre ranch with deer and hogs and in uh perfect yeah. like just fun area and then everything in between because it's like i think people are uh in general are watching and saying oh that's not very nice and yet they live in a new york city apartment and versus there's such a wide range of habitats that your dog could have you know what i mean it's so interesting because the way that the wild or you know the the ranch dog works versus the way the apartment dwellers is so different yeah you know you got anything to say about that? Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, I was thinking about this yesterday, something like this, but I'll try to answer your question. Then maybe I'll go into that because I think that's an what I'm going to say is an interesting point. Yeah. I mean, the, the apartment life can be fine for a dog. Uh, you need the right dog. You need to give it an outlet. I mean, that's why I don't bemoan dog parks that much, although I'm changing a little bit on it because there are people that live in New York City that chose to get a dog and they can't walk five hours a day, mm -hmm. right? And so you go to a big open field. But um, yeah, I mean, it's a very different life. But he, here's what, if, if I answered your question, I don't think I did. But uh, I'll come back to it if you want me to. Mm -hmm. I was thinking yesterday, I'm like, so many people, to, to your point, they get dogs that they can't handle. And like people will ask me like friends, like if someone's calling me, they already have a dog. So like friends, mm -hmm. I told a friend the other day, I go, you guys are not, cause he's a close friend. I go, you guys aren't a two dog household. And he goes, yeah. He goes, we're not even a one dog household, but they have two dogs. <laughs> and I go, you're not that. And he goes, yeah, we're not even a one dog household. And they have two, two dogs that are out of control. But, and then, so then I, I question like, why do people get, dogs when they can't handle them. And I think that's a very big question. And when should they get a dog? Like, it's not just about the dog. It's about perp people there. They could be very unhappy and they need, like, I don't need more love in my life. I'm not going to, I don't need anyone to love me more. Anyone to love me more. I have a lot of love from my family. 
I don't, I would never get a dog for more love. So I can't even under, I cannot understand the people. And I know there's people out there and you saw it during COVID. They were home by themselves. They needed attention. They need love. They need companionship. I need none of those things more, but I but, get, I guess I get why people would, would get it. So people get dogs because they want something to love them, which I don't understand. Do you need more love from force free trainers? Yes. They need to be nicer to me. I'm kidding. <laughs> They're, they're fine. I don't need, I need, I don't need any love. So I personally would never get a dog for companionship. Yeah. I right think now the challenge with the channel is that there's no reason to even talk about suitability of dogs because by the time they show up on the channel, well, also too, by the time they're looking at your channel, they probably, it's too late. They already have the dog. Now, maybe but, you could talk people out of getting the second or the third dog. Yes. Okay. What happens when the dog gets sick? How much money are you going to spend? How much money do you have? What happens when you go out of town and you have to board that dog? Like these are real, real, real thoughts. I'm a big fan of people getting dogs when they want another child. So I know people who, who women who go, I have two kids. I want another one. And they get a dog instead because they have love and time to give, but they have chosen to only have one child or two children, but they want three children. Now, does it mean you treat your dog like a kid? No, but it means you have, you have this, this thing that wants to give and be active and you, you want more work in your life. Apparently, if you want to have another more kid. responsibility, you want yeah. more responsibility, get a dog. If your husband doesn't want a kid, or if you really don't want another kid, get a dog. There's a void that can be filled or don't get a dog. I don't care. I'm just saying, does that make sense? There's a time and a place to get a dog. Financially, you better be able to, to afford those vet visits. You want to go out of town, you better have a place to go. Can If you can have I three answer, kids, don't get a kid. Can I answer don't get your a dog. question? Yeah. So you Please. asked the question, you said something to the effect of like, when would you take your dog to the vet and so forth or your cat to the vet, right? So I've actually thought of this many, maybe a year ago, maybe many years ago, I don't remember, but it's kind of like, it's such a horrible thing to talk about, like in front of our, you know, 10 or 20,000 of our closest friends, but thinking about it going, and I'm from, you know, and a different time. And so we were never in a household where, uh, taking your dog to have it, uh, go to the vet and have a $10,000 bill. That was never, something that was in the realm of possibilities, right? Yeah. I mean, we had a car that now. we had a car that like it was difficult to register it because of the money or maybe to get it to pass smog. So you just wouldn't you wouldn't ever spend thousands of dollars at the vet. That just, you know, and luckily I think the dog the dogs just lived a long time just in general, but I do see so I always think about that. I won't say the number, the dollar amounts, because that is going to get a lot of hate probably. But if you think about it, it's obviously going to be dependent on your current life situation, your financial situation, right? If you have no money, you can't really, there's not a whole lot you can do. But my thought would be south of $1,000, especially for my cats that I have. Yeah, I could, I could see it. Now, if it was something that continued on again and again and again and again, I would probably have to go, okay, this is becoming... You know, and then you have to think, what about the other things I could do with this money, including helping other people potentially? Because yeah, that's a theme a of this of show. Thought. There's also, there's no situation where continual thousand dollar payments or vet visits, that quality of life for the animal does not come into account. Yeah, it's a, it's a constant balance. The old, the oldest eight year old mom of the, um, the Labrador, that, that, um, dog was like, wa like hobbling, you know? And it was kind of sad, but part of me was like, yeah, it still seems like it's having a pretty nice life. It's just yeah, kind of debilitated is the proper word, yeah. but uh, yeah, yeah, you, that makes sense. yeah, I mean, Louis CK has this funny bit where he, he was like at a wedding and there was like a Sri Lankan guy and Louis CK goes, yeah, we're taking our dog to a. I don't know if it's an acupuncturist. I know it might have even just been a vet. It's like, yeah, the vet vet's gonna be ten thousand dollars. He said that the, I think it was told on Rogan actually, and 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 the the Sri Lankan looks at him and just started laughing like like he couldn't control himself. And he looked at him, he goes, "You're 
spending how much money on dog therapy or whatever it was. And Louis CK is like the guy just, he literally could not wrap his head around it. And that would be maybe a someone that doesn't have the money that Louis CK has literally cannot understand that concept. He, he, he could not understand it. The guy, the other guy. Yeah. Which, but also it's a cultural thing. There's also a level of, um, if you were to think about a million dollar house, right. As a kid, I'm going to have a million dollar house. You would have been like, I'm the richest person in the world. (laughs) And now you're like, if you live in Southern California or like you You own a a million bedroom, you get a three bedroom, two bath. And you know, and that was built 50 years ago and probably hit a million dollars pretty easy. So, um, that's true. Just bigger mortgages. But yeah, it's just, but I think the, the punchline is that people is that you're different. Your situation is going to determine what you're able to do. Um, you know, so I just think that is a, you know, but I don't ever want to, you know, if I was a billionaire, would I spend twenty thousand, forty thousand dollars to get, you know, my cat dialed in at the vet? Yeah, why not? It's unlimited money. There's, you know, there's no reason not to, right? But no reason that, to. that's not that's not the world we live in. You know, we live in no. a, where you got to pay for kids' stuff, and it's just a different type of, um, you know, different life situation. Yeah. Most people would spend whatever they will, whatever they could to keep their dog um, uh, for longer. If the dogs, they'll get loans, you know, you'll go out and get yeah. loans. I mean, I mean, people do anything nowadays. It's just culture has changed. Well, Prince is not too, right? Because like Prince actually is a full on working dog. And yeah, you know, he helps other dogs. So if you could, if you can, you know, get him, you know, not, not even from a monetary standpoint, but just from a continue to help and train other dogs. It's worth a lot of money to help get it back on track. Prince, I see dogs. I'm going to, I'm going to say this in a way that is not, um, people aren't going to love. Maybe there's takers and they're, they're not being takers. They're just being dogs, Mm -hmm. but they're just like, they're just like, I do what I want. Like Prince is a giver. If you mm-hmm. think about it, like Prince has added so much to my life. Prince wants to please me. Mm-hmm. Prince, Prince helped build this business. Prince helped build YouTube. Ch- like Prince has pretty Prince has done more for the world than he has taken from the world. The dog out there running around, bullying dogs, jumping on owners, they're kind of taking more from the world. The owners have allowed them to take more from the world than they've given to the world. And I think there's very few dogs out there who have given to the world like certain dogs or even, even it doesn't even have to be a prince or a daddy or a something. Mm-hmm. How about that dog at the dog park that goes around and is just sweet or, or can kind of correct another dog a little bit, or is just a good example or, or protects the children or, they're givers. The owners have allowed them to be givers and they are givers. And then there are takers just like people. Now, again, it's not the dog's fault, whether they're a taker in society, whether they're a net taker, the owners have allowed them to be. So Prince has paid his dues. Prince is different in what he would, what we would do for him, I guess. He deserves he deserves more. more. So I mean, is that disagreeable? Maybe it is to some people. It's yeah. Not, it makes sense to me. Yeah. It gets right back to this, the heart of the podcast, which is different tools for different things. Each circumstance is going to potentially have, you know, if you have a dog that helps a ton of dogs, it's very important that the dog continue to do that if he has the ability to. And that's a lot different. And than he just it. deserves I don't Does want to say like- deserves more than another dog, but he, he deserve he, he, I don't know. Does, does, does Einstein, uh, I'm not saying Prince is Einstein, but like there's people who make yeah. society a little better and there's people who make society worse. Are those people who make society better, more important? Are they more valuable? You could argue that they are. Yeah. And un- unpopular society opinion. argues they are. I mean, we have unpopular, 
an unpopular opinion would be that in a cap in a raw like capitalistic structure that whatever you know input you're giving to the economy is being rewarded with money and so it's like you know to the extent that you can pay to keep your dog in good health and whatever you're going to be able to do that and so um but yeah anyways i was going to ask you something or even mention yeah. this about the malinois thing because uh not to you know kick malinois off thing from last again. podcast yeah so the malinois and it was also stemmed from that popular video that you made uh last sunday not this about eight days ago or so nine days ago um but so this is so i learned a little bit about malinois because um and tell me what you think of this analogy so people in the comments you obviously told folks not to shame the owners of people who adopted a or rescued a malinois um but a lot of people in the comments were like i own three malinois four malinois two malinois and they said malinois are the you know an amazing dog they take an incredible amount of work well after the 100th comment that said they take an unbelievable amount of work. I thought maybe these Malinois take an unbelievable amount of work and maybe it's true. Right. And cause I think, in, Oh yeah, sure they do. But they're saying that they're working with their dog every day, you know, for an hour a day and they're really dedicated to the dog. It made me think. And so tell me what you think about this idea is it re reminded me of Jack Russell terriers that people used to say, Oh, I love, I want to go to Jack Russell terrier. And people would say, you need to make sure you're willing to exercise that dog at a very high level and throw the ball with it and spend an hour of nonstop exercise to get it to chill out. Otherwise, it's going to go crazy in your apartment. And so what do you think of this like Malinois are at this and maybe lesser or, or more so like a Jack Russell Terrier that need uh, orders of magnitude more than maybe a golden retriever or a other more yeah. mellow dog. I think the Jack Russell Terry is a good analogy because you're right. 20 years ago, 30 years ago, they 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 were considered this very difficult breed. And then they kind of, now you don't see a lot of them because mm -hmm. they were a very difficult breed. And so this is a Jack Russell Terrier added at 45 pounds to it, mm -hmm. you know, and, that, and that's where Malinois are at right now. Are you saying that the Jack Russell Terrier probably has waned in popularity because of the difficulty with dealing with that level of hyperactivity? Yes. And because that show Frasier went off the air. Oh, and then, do you remember that show? Yeah, the state. No, I Bro, never, I that know show it, but was I didn't the like worst. it. Oh, it was like the worst show. I remember as a kid and I remember it was like this super popular show. I, for some reason, when I was a kid, I like knew the ratings of shows, right? <laughs> I watched Cheers and then I watched... And like Frasier, you could, I couldn't watch it for five. It was an old person show. Yeah, it was old person. But it was, was super fun. popular. No, that, that show was sucked. horrible. That show sucked. And the only, it I mean, I'm going, so bad. isn't he, isn't it the same character from Cheers though? Yes, yes. It's like a spinoff. It was. Uh, but I just, that's Kelsey Grammer. Yeah. I never thought he was that funny. Although no. there was a part on Cheers where um, the girlfriend didn't like uh Frazier, she liked Sam Malone and she liked him because <laughs> he was a bad Sam boy because oh, he yeah. was a bad boy. bad boy and so uh, he goes he goes oh like I'm a bad boy too I'm a bad boy. <laughs> look at me I'm running with scissors I'm running with scissors <laughs> I've seen like, that yeah that actually is super funny and then of course this is not dog related but Cliff Clavin who is just an yeah. epic character and he went on Jeopardy do you remember that one he goes vaguely I do and then he goes like, he like, cause you know, they ask him all these questions like bar trivia and all this stuff. That's like perfect for Cliff Clavin. <laughs> and they did it. It was like, it was the funniest thing. It's like a Seinfeld episode. And he goes like all the way, he does it all. And then they go, well, it looks like, uh, you know, you're up by all this, all this points or whatever. If, as long as you didn't do something stupid, Cliff, you'll be, and he's like, let's just go call it quits right now. And they're like, no, no, we're going to need to see your, your answer. And then his, I think his final like, response, jeopardy. Yeah. Final jeopardy. His response yeah. was like four people who have not been in my house, right? Because he got some, <laughs> and then they he lost and he ended up doing, it was super funny. But uh, yeah, that, yeah, to your point, Jack Russell Terriers, if to bring it back, um, that show must have made Jack Russell Terriers very popular. I think um, so. Wasn't, there was a movie with, I think it was called Clean Slate with Dana Carvey. It was like a, a comedy. I, I feel so. like that was also a Jack Russell and it, it might not be, I'd have to look it up after, but um, so I guess some of it, some of it is just 
popular culture drives new dog breeds to rise to the top, but it does. your, your contention is incredibly difficult breeds to deal with kind of just wane in popularity because people just have negative experiences. Yeah. With There's a wanna... threshold, I think, mm -hmm. you know, and then the, the, the information gets out there and it permeates, you know, deep into society. Like, like we think Malinois are tough. We know this, mm -hmm. but, but the, the average person may barely know this. They're not on the Malinois feed on Instagram or something. I don't know. Like you, I think that certain information is obvious. That doesn't mean like I was at SeaWorld and they were telling Dine with Shamu is this kind of informal thing. And I'm came from Moore Park where I'm like, oh, and I'm giving facts. The SeaWorld mm -hmm. people are like, you need to talk at a fourth grade level to these yeah. people. And I'm like, I'm like, uh, yeah, but they're mostly adults out there. I didn't say this, but they're like, yeah, we don't care. You still talk at a fourth. I'm like, now, mind you, it is Florida. Just kidding, Florida. Um, just kidding, Orlando. But uh, you see what I'm saying? Like, no, it, we, we can't assume anyone knows anything. SeaWorld's like, no, you need to talk at a fourth grade level to adults. Yeah. That's some inside baseball for SeaWorld right there. Yeah. That's, that's, that's speaking to the general public about something you know about. It's they a, don't know it. It's a great point about dog training and also about, because I this, I've learned a lot about dog training but mostly just from watching your videos and then watching other uh, popular YouTubers videos. So I've, I've spent an inordinate, inordinate amount of time uh, learning from other popular dog trainers, but mostly from you. And so it's, it's just very interesting. But one of the things I was going to ask you is, I mean, we might've talked about this before, but we think, okay, now that I've done all these like videos and thumbnails, I go, okay, I could probably, I think I could name like, more than 40 breeds probably maybe more than that but um i'd have to i could probably do that later just i don't like think you could name more than 40 breeds you don't think so no oh <laughs> don't call me out on this podcast we'll do it we should do breeds? it at the end you know we should do it we should do it at the very end of this podcast I think you we can name go back to, breeds. we go back to the 40 we could go back to the 40 or at the very end of this podcast we'll do it as an end we'll cut it out if it's totally horrible but i'll just try to rattle off 40 and then we'll see if at I'm the a end. liar or not. Yeah. We'll leave it in or we'll take it yeah. out. We'll probably yeah, leave yeah. it in because who exactly. cares? Stick but, around if you want to stick but around. But of course, yeah. But I mean, it's like, I'm pretty sure I can name 10, but it's like, I don't think a lot yeah, of Americans na 10. could could do more than 15. Yeah, so when you say not. Malinois, I bet you like only 3% of the population even knows what a Malinois is. Yeah, maybe more than that. But yeah, not, not as many as you'd think. Yeah. A lot less. I mean, that's, yeah. that's one of the funny things, right? We, we live in this dog world. Yeah. This dog training world. So all we're getting every week is just dog, dog, dog stuff. And so we think it's normal to know how to train your dog. Do you think finance should be more normal to someone like me? Like I've sat down with you about finance and you've said mm -hmm. things and I'm just like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I get it, but I've never really thought about it. And you're just, you know, yeah. your finance world is the same as my dog training world. Yeah, it really I think is a, a similar thing. A funny thing about it is it's similar to you. Is so this is about why this podcast is interesting is because having talked to you and then seeing how much you know about every single little piece of every topic that you could just go off on is when I was a banker uh, early on in my career, I would uh, we had like Yahoo Finance and different types of financial articles, Wall Street Journal, things like that. And so a lot of times, like during downtime, you would read like personal finance articles. But then it's like, if you do that all the time, you just read like thousands of articles and, you know, maybe tens of maybe up to a hundred different types of personal finance books or loosely associated with that. Yeah. You start thinking everyone knows about college savings accounts, like 529 yeah. plans and people have no idea. And so it's, it gets back to SeaWorld's thing about you need to talk at a fourth grade level because you can't assume that everyone has your same experience of that. Just the way when you go to a farm or you deal with horses, you're like, Oh, I, I don't know anything about this stuff. Like I'm, I'm literally a kindergartner showing up on the first day and needing yeah. to learn how this stuff works. And so, um, it is a beautiful part about kind of life is that we don't all need to be 
expert dog trainers. That's what we have Joel for, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And people do that. I've seen people be like, I'm going to get a dog because I know I have you, Joel. Doesn't it's not great though. Get your wallet it's not out. A great thinking. Yeah, like I'm not going to raise the dog for you. Yeah, it's a ton. It's a ton of work, but it's. I think correct. Is this a correct statement that a lot of if people had, as you said, you didn't say being mean, but I think you, the better word you said was intensity. If people could bring the right level of intensity to their dog, especially earlier on in correcting unwanted behaviors early and at a, a, a decent enough like threshold or uh, extent that a huge number of problems could be solved in dog training with just that immediate, like, no, get out, get off the count. Like, right. Yeah. Intensity is one aspect to it. You have to know, you have to know timing you have, but, but intensity is that's one reason on my channel. I am me. Like I've, I've, look at me 10 years ago before YouTube, I was the same guy at a private session, exact mm -hmm. same guy, but there is, there is this aspect of no nonsense that I am with the clients and the, and, and on the videos, because I realize I need to bring it up to here so that the clients end up here. Yeah. Like if I'm here, they're going to be here. And if I'm here, they're going to be here, but they have mm -hmm. to get to here. So I have to be here. Kind of like the to, football analogy. Like yeah, I have you, to show them even bigger so that they at least come up in their intensity or skill level or whatever you want to call it. They need to. Yeah, you know, your your job is like the difficult job of bringing their intensity level up. Which you said, I don't want to try to you know get a a linebacker and teach them how to hit hard. Like I need to find somebody who who naturally does that and tamp them down. But you have the opposite problem because people just show up and they are who they are and they have that type of uh, deportment or whatever it is, whatever the word is, but they, so you, but what's funny about this is the, the um, video that you posted yesterday, I didn't even know that you were posting it and then you posted it, but I mean, I know we talked about it and stuff, but um, I, I was looking at it at that ranch last night. I go, Oh, he posted it. I go, he posted the video. I thought you might wait uh, to post it. So you post that video, Shut but, up. During that, yeah, during that um, talk with that gal or that lady, you were like super intense, but you weren't, you <laughs> weren't know. being mean to her. You were trying, and I, I saw what you were doing. You're trying to say like, no, when I do this, you do this. It seems like you're yelling at her, but you're trying to get put in her mind. This is my attitude, dog. Like, hey, this is who I am, dog. Like mimic me but it, it almost seemed like you were yelling at her, but you were trying to demonstrate the intensity level and the weight, the attitude with the dog. You know what I mean? Yeah. That, the, the video I posted yesterday is a good example or a couple of days ago, a good example of what we're talking about because you actually are the one who go, well, watched it and you go, well, you're pretty intense. And I was like, am I? But it was like a different kind of intensity because I was teaching her something different than I show in a lot of videos. I was teaching her sit stays and all the, it was like a different kind of video. And so I think I was, or a different kind of session. So I was just kind of different. And I don't know why I was, and also she was a really good client who could take in a lot. Like I knew I wasn't going to offend her. So yeah. I, I got it up even another level. Whereas if I'm going to offend somebody, like I'm not going to go hardcore, like I'm going to tamp it down, not offend somebody, but if someone can't take it, I'm going to tamp it down a little bit. Like Tiger Woods, he, he said, or his dad said, his dad was super hard on him. And his dad goes, I'm, if you ever want me to be less hard on you, I want you to say this word or do something. And then someone asked his dad, did he ever say it? And he goes, no. Like Tiger Woods could take it. So his dad gave it. Yeah. If someone can't take it, they, sh they should get out of it. They sh and so, oh, but I need to gauge my own intensity and my own do this, do this to the person because they're not going to tell me. There's a, I think I've mentioned this on this podcast, maybe not, but there's a, what is it? Miyamoto Masashi, the samurai guy says, when you know the, 
when you know the way broadly, you will see it in all things, right? And what you just said blew my mind. So that's blow the mind number five, I think on this podcast is uh, exactly what you said when I was having like some private sessions with uh, j- doing jujitsu is the coach or you know, the professor that call him, it was so hard on me and I'm paying this guy, like I'm yeah. paying him out of my own pocket and it's not cheap. And he was so difficult on me. And it was like any minor thing was like, you're doing it wrong. Do it like this. And, and one time he said, Hey, it's your money. You do whatever you want. He's like, I can literally baby you through this and you can do whatever you want. Or he's like, but I don't think that's what you want. I think you want to get as good as you can as quickly as possible. And if it means it hurts your feelings, you're okay with that. And, and I was like, basically don't worry about my feelings. Just give it to me straight. And if you're barking orders on me, I'm okay with it because I want this one hour to be as powerful as possible. Yeah. Now that's yeah. any coach or anything and you have to gauge or ask the person to tell you when you're going too far or not. We're going to keep going. We're going to go hard because you, you're going to learn the most if we go hard. And if we baby you, you're going to learn less. You yeah. or my clients or anybody. And this lady, they were big fans. They knew me I and I knew I could go hard and then they could learn the most. These yeah. two ladies. It was a lady and her sister on that yeah. video two days ago. Yeah. Yeah. It was like the Malinois video where you were, you know, you had to let the the people in the comments say, Hey, chill out on them. I'm let I'm letting them know what they need to do. So you don't need you don't need to do that. And so that's where it got really um valuable. It's like, hey, they can refer to this video and I'm showing them, but you don't need to jump in there and do that. So um do you want to jump into a couple of comments before we start yeah. to wind down? Yeah. Did you have any? You do you it. I already. Oh, I have some. Yeah, I've actually you know. touched on some of them. The floppy ears things was. Yeah, uh, I touched on great well. uh, sexual aggression. We kind of talked a little bit about that. Oh, can I read uh, this one while you're looking? Yeah, go ahead. This this is interesting. Renee McKinnon. She like apologizes. And I have no idea why she's apologizing. It's a super she's, long one. She's the one who got uh, hit by the dog. Run over last by the podcast. Dog. No, the three podcasts ago, she's the one who got run over by the dog. In this I podcast from last week, she apologizes. She says, "Just want to apologize for the part of my comment I made last week where I said, do you have any training tips for us?'" And then she's like, "I realized that sounded like facetious and disrespectful." And I was like, "I think yes. she's just being very nice." Yeah, like we yeah, weren't but- taken aback by that. But you know who I'm referring to, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She put her knee up. Yeah, and she said, you She's know, you don't like do that. To, you don't do that to the boss or She's whatever. She's coming right? up again on our podcast. Yeah, I love it. She comes up on every podcast. This lady. I know. I didn't even like know that. that was the lady, and I just read her comment. So this in is the future. Fun. I'll keep my comments and topic, Mike. Like she, I hope everyone has a great weekend. All right, nice lady. So this is uh, Tiffany. She she quotes uh, 54 minutes into the video. She says, hello from the Eugene area. I mean, I imagine she means Eugene, Oregon, since that's where you are from. Uh, aren't you from actually Eugene or near Eugene? I'm from Eugene. I'm oh, from you're South actually, Eugene. South Central Eugene. Um, yeah. Love love the call for outside expertise about jobs for dogs. Hope someone chimes in. We live in a time where honest pursuit of the truth through conversation is such a breath of fresh air. Keep it up. Love the podcast. I thought that was cool. Especially from Eugene, the person. Uh, I know that's shocking. Isn't used to honest. Uh, uh, no, that's probably fair. They could keep, keep Oregon weird, right? That's the slogan. Oh, they love it. Uh, yeah, they're going to weird their way right out of. A oh, this one was interesting. Society up there. Sean Tarbell, I think. Uh, hey, guys, love the show. I thought I'd add a little information from a lifelong bird dog trainer. Bird dogs like a GSP. What's a GSP? German Short- shorthead pointer. Oh, wow. I was thinking George Napier. With a hyperactive tail can cause major damage to their tail while hunting around cactus and thorn yeah. bushes. I believe that's why people started docking tails on hunting dogs. Yeah. Makes, makes a lot of sense, right? Yep. Um. Somebody was commenting about uh, shorts or sorry, short videos, like to submit short videos. And so there was a little like mini thread where people were saying they would love that. And then they were like, maybe we should give a donation so that he'll do it. Good advice isn't free. Um, (laughs) They know that shorts 
Yeah, it's such a don't I'm, help us much. Well, no, I think they were trying to have shorts like submitted so that we could like click on it oh. and like review it. Um, hey, but it, it. Oh, go ahead. Can we talk about this live? Why don't we have a phone? Why don't we set up a Google a Voice line? and just freaking give the phone number out and just do listen to the messages? Yeah, like leave a message and over. we'll hear it. We'll leave it. Like don't like podcasts do that, right? That'd be cool. They play interesting just... ones. Like that weird guy from like two years ago called and was like, I know why you do all creepy oh, drunk. Yeah. Like, like people could call and leave weird stuff. Like Theo Vaughn does that and they're pretty funny. Yeah, I like, like that. Please don't call and go like, can you explain leash reactivity to me? Like, no, I'm not going to do that on the no, podcast. That, well, I we, might, should, but. we should solve that because I think it would be so fun. And even to play people's like voicemails would be good. Yeah. Um, and let me teach one thing about like, kids we always talk about having kids and stuff is like when you are doing a podcast and then your wife brings in like a what appears to be a baby monitor and you're like what am i supposed to do with the baby monitor are you leaving the house and i'm supposed to do this so you're all, you know you have to multitask professional podcast here Megan. yeah but yeah it shows the level of uh you know uh what she thinks about that but i had this one this is <laughs> yeehaw jihaw i guess it's saying uh but it was talking about uh her her his dog having genetic fear uh yeah, I saw you know it says joel saying to use what helps the dog and there's an interesting thing they said about dog daddy was dog daddy saying in one of his videos the dog is too scared to make a decision so i will make the correct decision for her as her guardian but i like the and i mean shout out dog daddy but i th i thought the term guardian was a really good term because if you're a dog owner you're a guardian of that dog right? Because the dog doesn't know it. it can't run in the street. It doesn't know what it can and can't do always. And so whether you're a legal guardian of a child or a parent, you know, kids, whatever, or you're a uh, owner of a dog, you are the guardian of that dog and you need to take the responsibility yeah. that goes with that. It's kind of an interesting word, guardian. Yeah, it's a good word. You also have to protect the dog and speak up for the dog when other people are... Uh putting the dog in dangerous situations or their mm -hmm. dog's aggressive. Yeah. You're a guardian. Yeah. yeah. Lisa says, I look forward to the podcast every week. I'm waiting for Joel to say German shepherd people chill. Did I do a good job on copy? Yeah, I saw that. I'm not saying German shepherd people chill. It's yeah. Malinois and Pitbull people that need to chill. That's the only group that needs to chill and they both need to chill the pit people more. That's why I said the Malamo people aren't there yet. I was thinking about this the other day. If you said pipples, if the government, I wouldn't like the government to do this, but whatever. Government goes, yeah, we're we're like many countries, we're outlawing pipples. You know how freaked out pipple, they would freak, they would be like at the in Washington, DC, like a million strong, like picketing. Yeah. You know what? If they said they were they were banning Dobermans, I'd go, Oh, I like Dobermans. That sucks. I'm gonna get a Rottweiler. You're not going to have a... I'm not going to go because my dog time. breed is not my identity, but they would be picketing Washington, D.C. because they're like, that's all we have. Yeah. Our breed is our identity. Shout out podcast number seven, right? For that little joke yeah. that you just heard. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. Uh, Molly Dolly says, wow, I never thought of the comparison of spade, neuter versus docking, cropping. Very good point. Loving the podcast. And I know you're thinking I'm shouting out all this loving the podcast stuff, but there is a lot of people that drop that in the, in the notes, so... I'm just saying it's just a, it's a mirror reflecting back. Um, yeah, I like when like that Jordan Peterson thing, like people go, oh, I've never heard that. Like my ear, there's no wild animals with or wild dogs, dogs, mm -hmm. canines with ear floppy ears. Your mind was blown. People are like, oh, my God, I've never thought of that. Like, that's a good thing. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I've never thought the, the oh, some to that on that Australia. I don't know if this is true. A commenter goes, oh, yeah, in Australia, ears and tail docking is legal. Okay, which is fine. I, I mm -hmm. could care less. He goes, it was either him or somebody else goes, oh yeah, in Australia, um, by six months, you have to have your dog neutered or spayed. Oh, wow. So to them, they go, yeah, well, you shouldn't dock ears and crop tails. And then the same people go, but let's cut them open, remove yeah. these vital organs. At and then, uh, and, but that's fine. Yeah, that's... Like, uh... Dude, they're... It's a little inconsistent see, potentially they're, they're just a little so this because one they just listen to people and go oh yeah oh yes sir yes sir okay that's bad okay oh that's good okay yeah. we'll do that as opposed to like wait a minute 
Yeah, do these people in office know more than we do? Maybe they oh, don't. The, the government is genius. They're so Maybe smart. They, they the government is only here. Listen. Oh, for me. They're only there they, to protect they, me. They care about They're my me guardian. So They're my guardian. Uh, Joanne says, <laughs> uh, thanks, Joel and Eric, for another great podcast. Loving the content and honesty and humor, which is obviously your humor. Love from the UK. And she says, yes, that's right, Europe. Get that Europe. because of your attacking of Europe in the past. So you still you can't get rid of them. They, the Europeans still <laughs> love you despite your stuff. Uh, let me rattle a few off just so we can. Uh, they love it. Uh, viewer nine oh five eight, which now I'm believing is just the same person commenting over and over, says <laughs> Joel is a fierce defender of his pack, and his pack extends to all humans. This is a pretty underrated fact that keeps everyone coming back to the channel. One of the best leaders around. Shout mm. out, Joel. Mm. Thank you. That? Thank That's pretty you. cool, right? That's great. They're the viewers, the subscribers, the clients, the clients big time. They're like my crew, dude. I'm like the leader of this crew. Yeah, it's I need to set the tone. Let me see. I'm just I'm the guy. It's named after me. Um can I tell you a really ridiculous, stupid, short joke that I heard. Go ahead. What do you call a magician's dog? I have no idea. A labracadabrador. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's a dad joke. <laughs> That's such a dad joke. So actually, uh, I actually screenshotted it. But what's so funny is I, it came up in my feed from a short because I'm watching all this dog stuff. And the guy who did it on the short said it in he was dying laughing so hard that it was like I started laughing. And I'm like, the joke is not that funny, but it's just one of those things where, you know, how like when a joke, it's like the reaction to the joke is funnier than the joke kind of thing. And it's yeah. like, oh, that's, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. the, that's kind of how that was. Okay. So, can I tell you something? Yeah. It, there's an animal theme to it. So this morning, I asked the, my six year old this because he always asks me. He go, Oh, he, my six year old, so funny. He always thinks about this stuff. It's probably from YouTube. He goes, he thought of this, this, and then I'm going to tell you the other thing. Mm -hmm. He goes, would you rather not be able to speak or scream every time you speak? <laughs> Which I thought, <laughs> I would rather not be able to speak. No it's, way, I like I, to scream. Scream, people would think you're crazy all the time. And if you couldn't speak, you just couldn't I already speak. do. Yeah, okay. So then the, the thing I saw this morning that I asked my six-year-old again is, if for $10, $10 million dollars, you could have $10 million, but a snail follow, knows where you are all the time. And if he gets to, for the rest of your life, and if he gets to you, you will die a painful death. I think you take the money, right? Because you might die yeah. a painful death anyways. <laughs> well, that's a good point. But the snail will, for the rest of your life, know where you are. It'll follow you. And if it gets to you, all, so every time you go to sleep, you're going to have to like put something in front of the door. You're going to have to always close the door. I'm not taking the money. $10 million is not that much money. I mean, you have like, you're worth like a billion now, right? I'm worth a hundred million dollars <laughs> from YouTube. You're the highest paid YouTuber in the entire yeah. world. You're like so you're, Mr. Beast. You're, you're about as impressed with my snail story as I was with your joke, which is yeah. not very. The only good thing about my joke is it was pretty quick, but, but yeah, no, my, I like my, the snail right, thing. It, I'm glad you brought up the snail thing because it brings me into the next idea, which is, do you think that dogs, you know, dogs have um, dreams and probably nightmares. Uh, For sure. Well. What do you think about wild animals? Like, um, let's say uh, hyena. We always talk about hyenas. They're like sitting there dreaming and they're like, lion's going to get me. Lion's going to get me. Right. Like they must be having those type of like terrifying dreams Good that they're question. being stalked. They may not. You think they're just more chill? No, they have their, their, their nightmares are when they're awake, they, they, they're satiated by horribleness. They, what I think we probably dream a bunch because like life's pretty easy. We need to, Lion. our brain needs to maybe add stress or our brain has fears. Hyenas, lions, like, bro, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if they're dreaming nightmares. I don't think I need to, to add stress in my life. I really don't. I yeah, but like you have that. your basic needs are taken care of. It's a Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You know about this? Mm -mm. It's like a, it's psychology or sociology, something like that. But it's basically like once your 
uh, security and safety, it becomes like a next level of things you want. Then it's like self-interest and it kind of goes to the top. So it's like the top is like self-actualization. It's, you know, you're not worried about self-actualization when you don't have any food and you're starving to death. Yeah, right. Yeah, so yeah. it's like, it's just a yeah. hierarchy of needs essentially, which is yeah. pretty interesting. No, it I, is. It's, it's interesting to dogs too. There's one more comment I want to read. Oh, okay. Um, then we and then be. we can, then we can get into the, um, 40 dog thing and the challenge. And then we'll see if you can do it after me without naming the dogs that I named. Uh, so, and then you, you can count them for me. Okay. Luke Chohani says, I got my first dog ever a year and a half ago and we had our first child two weeks ago. Congratulations, Luke. Uh, I learned a ton adopting a high drive untrained adult uh, coon hand beagle mix and am thankful to have gone through that trial and education with a dog to save myself some mistakes before the baby arrived. Can you both talk more extensively about your approach to parenting, maybe an episode devoted to parenting and how it relates to dog training? I'm not saying we do that. I'm just saying it's an interesting comment. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's parenting and dog training. I mean, they're, they're similar. Raising wild animals is different than raising a dog. Raising a kid is different than raising a wild animal, but the pro the approach is similar, including basic needs, like you just talked about, including age appropriateness, which I think is way under talked about in parenting. And so people hate the, I think even you've mentioned this, uh, um, um, participation trophies, mm -hmm. bro. I'm fine with participation trophies when the kids eight, six uh, people are like no participation to get the kid into the sport. Give them all a trophy. I could care less if they're 16 though. So my point is like these things are talked about participation trophies. Oh, they're horrible. They're the worst thing ever for a six year old. They're the greatest yeah. thing ever because the, the love of the sport is way more important than winning at that age. So can I try to blow your mind on this? Important. Can I try okay. to blow your mind on this? I went out somebody in the comment section 10 years ago about this situation. So sadly, we are not in the same generation, I don't believe. You I think and me? I'm like, yeah, I'm oh. like the oldest generation Y or millennial that there is. Oh. Uh, and you are probably the end of generation X, give or take, um, as far as where you're actually at the end or toward the end. You're toward the end of, of Gen oh. X. X? Gen X. That's what Gen I am. X. Yeah, you're Gen X. That. But yeah, you are. You're in is the. It, that's good, right? third quarter your or, generation is bad yeah exactly mine's but, better I so think. so so then the millennials uh although i'm i feel like because of how i was raised and and having an older Maybe a little different. that it was yeah, yeah. that i was I pulled into the the prior one but yeah. you know I you know take it with a grain of salt so what's funny is but so millennials obviously get a lot of trouble and they go yeah millennials don't work millennials don't do this and i'm like who are these millennials i'm working my butt off here right but here's here's what they said about participation trophies they said so, um, what's with all these kids, these millennials, you know, they all had, they grew up on all these participation trophies, right. And they, they went off on this big tangent and I said, so these kids had participation trophies and this is why they're all messed up. And I was like, who bought the participation trophies? What do you think of that? The well, parents bought them. The parents bought them. So that's either your Gen Xers or your uh, baby boomers. They would have been the ones that gave them. So why are you going to get mad at the kids? Parents, bought them. parents didn't buy them. The, the league bought them. The league yeah, bought them. The coaches <laughs> bought them. Yeah, but who are the, the stupid coaches? soccer league bought them? The coaches were all a part of the older what, generation. What am I going to go rip it out of my kid's hand? <laughs> no, I know. But I'm just saying like the people who were buying, it wasn't the children who oh, right. created the, the age of people. They were yes, the ones yes, that yes. were just Oh, that's a good point. So it was like the the people they the pan it was actually they were pandering to the you know or they yeah. were trying to like no. they coddle the uh to your kids. point to your point you're right the freaking like you're uh, if i screw my kids up i screw my kids up like it's not their fault yeah that's your like point if, i think yeah and that's yeah. very true but it's just funny that when you think of like well that's these kids point, are all actually. spoiled and they have all this stuff and it's like well who spoiled them who that's bought them so, who so bought true. them all that stuff it's like that's well so true. It's the old look in the mirror situation. So as we approach the end of it, and we can rattle off some crazy stuff. Do you want to try this little 40 thing before we go and see hey, if go. I'm a liar? Okay. Go. So you, can you count them for me? Okay. Uh, Doberman Pinscher, Rottweiler, Cane Corso, uh, Dogo Argentino. Um, 
Did I say press an arrow? I don't think I did. That's five. Uh, did I say German Shepherd? No. Belgian Malinois? Is Dutch Malinois one? Uh, no, and Dutch Shepherd. Dutch you. Shepherd. Dutch. I can see on your face that Dutch Shepherd. Okay. Uh, Jack Russell Terrier. I could do him just on. Bro, the, I could do him a lot. I could do him just on this pod. Or just what we've done in things. So uh, Labrador. Labradoodle. Uh, poodle. You're doing good. Um, Chihuahua. Um, boxer. Uh, what else? Let me think here for a second. I have to like visualize them. A beagle. A hound dog. Um, There's tons of hounds, but go ahead. Yeah. Okay. You'll let me slide on that We're one. Just counting them as one. Okay. All the hounds are going to go. Oh, that's, that's trouble for me. Okay. Now I bet you people are yelling at their screen. Like, what are you doing? You don't know anything. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Today. So, um, Borble. That's a good one, right? That's a great um, one. A Australian cattle dog. An Australian shepherd. Those are different. Um, let's see. What were our big videos? Uh, the one was a hound. There was a... Oh, uh, oh a, min a miniature a miniature pincher. Man I'm, where am I at? Where 20. am I at right now? I'm at 20 so far. Okay, yeah, let's keep going. Okay. We don't want to bore them, but we'll cut cut the top. It sucks. Uh, what else? You're going to have a so, time limit. Sometime. Okay. Okay. So let's see. So what about a Cocker Spaniel? A pointer? A lot um, of pointers, but we'll just say pointer. Pointer. Um, a, um, oh, uh, Sharpe. How do you like that one? Uh, a... Oh, I just had another name of a dog. Uh, not Charpe. Um, oh, a pug. What are the other small lap dogs? Oh, uh, Shih Tzu. 25, right? Yeah. Uh, let me see if I get to 30 and then I'll call it. Yeah. Um, yeah. We don't yeah. want to bore these people too much. So five more. Um, a, um, oh, a pit bull, dude. American bulldog. I like that. I know that's a little sketchy, but uh, American Bulldog, Ooh. a Mastiff. Uh, what? One more, and two more. Uh, two more. Okay, two more. I can't tell where your thumb is at. So two more. Let me. Did I say a Golden Retriever? No, I was like he left that out. Yeah, I just wanted to he show my level of, my level of skill. Uh, no, I'm kidding. You could uh, get to forty easy. Let, let me. Yeah, I'll don't. do one more. I'm just saying yeah, you can. No, we'll do one more. Let me see about. A oh a greyhound, oh yeah, that's and that's random. If you I, can I could get do to greyhound, hound. you could get to fifty. If I had probably. a piece of paper and a pencil, I could, I could probably yeah. get to fifty. Yeah, oh, how I would do it, I'd strong. go through countries. I'd be like Japan. I'd be like Chow and uh, Shiba Inu, and then I'd go to China. I'd go Chow. Oh, I'd go Chow. I'd go Sharpay, and then I'd think of like random like Himalaya. And then I'd go to like the Middle East, and I'd go. What about Africa? I'd go sight. I'd go sight hounds. And I go, I go, whip it, greyhound, saluki, um, there's other should, sight hound. And then the I, intro. Yeah, yeah. And then I just would just I'd go through countries or I'd go through AKC South groups. America. How about some South America? Uh uh Dog Argentino. Um um oh, you can boy, never say the narrative. Oh bro, even... there's like those Mexican dogs, those hairless Whoa. dogs. Sorry, what about uh, what well, about a Malamute, Malamute, a Siberian husky? That's two more. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think I got it. I think I And you it. go to Germany alone, you're gonna you set them all. I mean German mm -hmm. Shepherd, Doberman, Rottweiler, Great Dane, Boxer, Great Dane. Many more from Germany. Great Dane. Uh I is there the anything breeds. is there anything from France? Tons. Bousseron, like which I said in one podcast, and people are like, it's not pronounced like that. That's a French dog. Uh Your French is not good though. No, my French isn't good. A little, a little patchy. So do I get the gold star? Do I get a participation trophy? You did really that? good. I said you couldn't name 40. You could. But I think easily. I could name just from the video, just just the videos that we've done. Yeah, like I could just true. go, just start going through. But it seems like there's a lot of the similar dogs, you know? Like a lot of the dogs, you know, there's like 10 breeds probably make up a ton of the dogs that clients that come to your oh. facility. Oh yeah, I mean, there's like, yeah. There's problem. What is it Labs like? are number one. Ger Golden Retrievers, I think two. German Shepherds, three. Unlike popularity in this country. I think it goes that order. Dude, this computer is at, uh, let's see. 
looks like six percent. I think that's a uh, yeah. Sign that we're done. Yeah, I think that's. Yeah, and we did we hit one fifty four, so it's probably about one fifty because of the yapping that we did. So, oh yeah, um, yeah, that's good. So, anything else uh, you want to chime off on before we and we'll circle back next week? No. Oh. Yeah. Okay. And then th- this was recorded on July third. So happy uh, Fourth Independence of July. Day. Fourth of July be, the Americans. Be careful with your pets and the fireworks. Oh, this is going to mm. come out after July fourth. <laughs> after really. the dog has run away. Bro, uh, we were July 4th, five years ago, we were at a friend's house and he comes walking from, he went over somewhere, he comes walking with the nastiest, scruffiest, most matted dog I've ever seen. The dog was living in a drain pipe, like for a long time. It was, it was, the dog was, was the nastiest dog I've ever seen. And it just came out because of the fireworks. It flushed it out. Mm. And they rescued this dog and got it cleaned up and whatnot. But I was like, oh my God, that dog like lived in this drain and the fireworks flushed it out. So be careful with your dogs. If you want to desense your dogs to fireworks, you can, it's not the easiest thing, but you Take can it. play it low great. level firework sounds, reinforce your dog, desensitize them to the sounds so that the sounds on the fourth aren't so traumatic. Yeah. It's probably the best way to do it because it's not easy. I mean, think about fireworks. My kids heard fireworks last night. My six-year-old was like scared. Whoa. Now imagine a dog is like, what the hell is going on? Yeah. No, it's, and they have really good hearing also, right? So they're probably more sensitive to, or is that yeah, a just wise? Just imagine the boom of it. Like they never hear it. It's like, it's feel freaky. it. Right? They feel it. Yeah, it's freaky. That 4th of July, when you hear the, when you're real close and you, you can feel it in your chest. Like, oh, that's crazy. It's kind of wild. Yeah. So. Happy fourth out there. Again, we apologize to all the Europeans. You know, sorry about that, but we are now independent of you. So Oh yeah. Yeah. Sorry guys. Yeah. What can you do? What we can love you, do? you guys though? Don't we apologize to all of Europe. No. Just, just the United Kingdom. Just the UK. But we left. Now yes. we're good friends with them. Yeah, they were uh they were a, a superpower. The uh, the dominant world they power. Were the and then the sun has set on them, I believe, to some degree. And we won't comment on where America is on that process, but yeah. Sun is. <laughs> it's getting yeah, late in the, late no in the old. Yeah.